In this video, we're exploring standard deviation, the statistics term you may or may not remember, but will find handy when it comes to analyzing your assessment data. Before we dive in, let's start with a fundamental math concept we all understand, mean or average. You can find the mean easily by adding up all the scores and dividing by the number of scores there are. Think a little deeper about the mean, however, and you'll start to realize it masks a lot of what's really going on with your data. Standard deviation reveals just what the mean might be hiding. First, let's take a closer look at what standard deviation is, and then how you can use it to make sense of your data, starting with a simple definition. A standard deviation describes how spread out scores are. In other words, how far they deviate from the average. Mean scores are very helpful to get a sense of how a group is doing. But when score reports include mean scores without standard deviation, it's hard to see just how spread out the scores are. That's because mean is just one number to describe how the entire group of students performed. Let's consider two different classes, class A and class B. And for simplicity, Let's pretend these classes only have five students each. In class A, students have scale scores from 610 to 645. The mean score is 625. Now let's look at class B. Students in class B have scores as low as 550 to as high as 725. Very different scores from class A. However, class B has the same mean score as class A. Even so, the spread of the scores are very different. The scores of class A are all very close to the mean, but the scores of class B are more spread out. The standard deviation is a way to quantify just how much the scores are spread out and tells you, on average, how far away the scores are from the mean. We'll spare you the calculation, but the standard deviation of class A is about 14 and the standard deviation of class B is about 78. Since class B's scores are more spread out, class B has a greater standard deviation. This means there is more variation in the class B results, something the mean would not be able to show you. To see how standard deviation applies to assessment reports, let's imagine you have scores for an entire grade from a district. We can show these scores in a histogram which counts up how many students had each score. Test scores often follow what is called a normal distribution, particularly when looking at large populations of students, which you may know is a bell-shaped curve. In a normal distribution, the mean is at the center. In this case, the mean of these scores is 625, and the distribution is symmetrical. About half the scores are above the mean, and half the scores are below the mean. The neat thing about a standard deviation is that when data are normally distributed, like they are here, about two-thirds of the data, or 68% of the data, are within one standard deviation from the mean, which means that just by knowing the standard deviation, you also know how most students scored on their assessment. In this case, the standard deviation is 20, so about two-thirds of the scores are 20 points above the mean, or 20 points below the mean. That's between 605 and 645. If you were to multiply your standard deviation by two, also known as calculating two standard deviations, you would capture approximately 95% of all data. About 5% of the data are beyond two standard deviations, or greater than 40 points above and below the mean. These scores that are beyond two standard deviations are in the tails of the distribution. These students earned very low or very high scores compared to their peers. When you see the mean and the standard deviation on a score report, it can help you get a quick idea of the distribution of students' scores by adding and subtracting one or two standard deviations from the mean. Take for example one school that has a mean of 600 and a standard deviation of 20 for a grade level while another school in the district for the same grade also has a mean of 600, but a standard deviation of 100. 
On the surface, these schools might look like they're performing similarly because they have the same mean, but the spread of the scores is completely different. At the school with standard deviation 20, most student scores are in the range of 560 to 640, which is two standard deviations from the mean of 600. At the school with the standard deviation of 100, most students are in the range of 400 to 800. Those scores are much more spread out. Using standard deviation, you have a much clearer understanding of what's going on and can make more informed decisions on where additional resources, scaffolding, or teacher-led intervention might be required. On the diagnostic reports for exact path, standard deviation is reported inside parentheses next to the average score. You can add and subtract this number from the mean to calculate the range of scores within one standard deviation. On the class results report, teachers can use standard deviation to see how spread out scores are within a single class. Our aggregated report also includes the standard deviation of scores from whole grade levels within specific schools and across the entire district. Now, when you see mean scores with numbers in parentheses after them, labeled SD, you'll know what's really going on. Averages can be deceiving, but the standard deviation will help you get a sense of what the distribution of scores really looks like. We hope you're as excited as we are to go check out your own score reports and apply your knowledge of standard deviation.